The most difficult part of this project was really the, the pre-production. Trying to find the animals that I could bring into the studio, find the right trainers to come with these animals, and, and even just to find a space that, that could uh, contain an elephant, contain a giraffe, and, and that was a big part of it. And so in many ways the project was almost over before it ever began. My initial idea was relatively small in scope. Let me just try working with a chimpanzee. Uh, maybe, you know, some, some other primates. And then once I realized what was involved, it made more sense just to hire a lot of different animals. So for my first shoot, I went from just having a chimpanzee to having an elephant, a lion, a tiger, a zebra. And I hadn't even started the project. And once I got started, a lot of other things came to light that I never would have expected. Well, I think the, the interesting thing is, is that these are considered trained animals. However, they're not trained in the sense that a dog is trained, where you can say sit and they'll sit. They're basically trained to not come out onto the set and, and try to attack you. And then beyond that, they're really going to do what they want to do. And it's up to, to you as a photographer to try to find a moment in all of that organized chaos. You know, hopefully the animal will give you that moment. A lot of it has to do with patience because you can't continually mess with the lighting. You can't have people running in and, in and out of the scene. I mean, you really have to just let the animal do what they're going to do. And then hopefully you'll find that moment. You'll find that little, that little piece of connection that's a little bit more extraordinary. Let's see. Can you do a few more like this and then we'll get it down for a break? And I think that when you stand in front of one of these images, and there's a starkness to it, there's a sense of isolation, that it's a one-on-one -on -one experience. You're on equal playing field with this animal. You're inhabiting the space with it in a way that's much more immediate. It's much more a sense of proximity than you get when you're looking at a safari image, for example, where you're looking into their world and you're not really part of that world. What I'm doing is bringing you into sort of a common space that you can share for a moment with this animal.